Hello, dear friends. Welcome to Cracking the Hidden Code for Manifesting Your Dreams. I'm Bess Birkins, and I'm thrilled to be here with you today. Thank you for answering the call to get a power boost as you move into the second half of this fabulous year. I'm a transformational life coach certified by Mary Morrissey and the Life Mastery Institute in Los Angeles, California. I'm also a teacher of shamanism for about 25 years now. I've been leading vision quests as well in California and the Swiss Alps for over 22 years. And in my work, what I do is help people harness their full potential and create a life of purpose and passion. Right now, you are standing at the doorway to your greatest life. It's time to tap into your unlimited potential. Time to manifest a life that's in harmony with your soul's purpose. You made a great decision to be here today. Now, my intention is that you leave here knowing three major tools that can help you really tune into your purpose and align with the invisible laws of success. Also, I'm hoping that you'll have greater clarity on what your dreams actually are and that you'll feel even more confident in the power that lives in you to achieve your goals and your dreams. Now, to do this, I'll share with you a story that will help us take the first step. So there's this mother mouse, and she's leading her three little mouse children through a house. They come around a corner, and all of a sudden, there's a cat. The cat is so happy to see them, is poised to attack, and the mother mouse stands up on her hind legs and says in a very loud voice, Ruff, ruff, ruff. And the cat gets completely scared and runs off. The mother mouse then turns around to her little babies and says, Now, children, that's the power of learning more than one language. I know that's a really fun story. But it's also a teaching story when we think about it. The cat represents what was standing in the way of where the mouse wanted to be. And right now, I'm guessing there's something standing between you and what you want. If you're alive, you've got challenges, of course. And knowing the language of the universal laws of success will help you overcome any difficulty that you're facing. Because there is a language, or you may call it a pattern or a way of doing things, that creates the results that you want. Once you understand what this language is, you can apply it to any area of your life that you want to improve. So I'm I'm curious, have you ever achieved a goal or a dream in your own life that, you know, when you first had that goal, you didn't know how you were going to achieve it? I'm guessing that that is the case. Of course, you know, we've all had goals and we had no idea how to accomplish them. And I think that proves a point, that you're capable actually of far more than you know. What I've learned during the many opportunities I've had speaking to different groups is that often our dreams and our longings, they're born out of the challenges that we're facing or the pain that we're currently experiencing. So again, I have a question for you. Do you have a challenge you're currently experiencing? Some area of life that's causing you pain, perhaps in your career or maybe in a relationship, perhaps with your health or with the amount of money you have or even the lack of free time. See, we live in a universe that speaks to us through two hidden growth signals, our longings and our discontents. You know that feeling of longing for something that you haven't yet created and that feeling of discontentment with a a current circumstance. These are the things that really spark us to grow. 
You can either be pushed by pain or you can be pulled by a vision. And these two energies, the pain of your problem and the burning desire for what you want, both are essential for creating new results in your life, new dreams, new beginnings. So let me take a moment and share with you a time in my life when a giant challenge really pushed me to make a huge change. This was many years ago when I was already successfully teaching shamanic workshops and leading lots and lots of vision quests. I came to a point in my work where I could see that I needed to expand my knowledge and tools. I needed to learn much more about the principles of transformation and manifestation. And I felt a very painful gap between all my experience and knowledge of rites of passage teachings and all the shamanism trainings and that knowledge that was on one side. And then where I knew my students could go if I just had more skill and knowledge to take them farther on their paths. So what I really wanted and longed for was a quantum leap in my knowledge. But there was another voice inside of me, and that voice argued why I shouldn't even be concerned with this. It said, you're already doing bigger teachings than most people. You've got a Master of Arts degree and you don't need more student loans, and you don't have time to get more training. And look, you've got great evaluations. Your students are happy. Just don't rock the boat here. So I wonder if you can relate to this kind of voice in your own life. Have you ever heard or had that voice of doubt or fear try to dissuade you when you wanted something bigger than the life that you were living? Well, I pushed through those doubts. I found my mentor, Mary Morrissey, did some rigorous, extraordinary training with her, and am now an associate at the Life Mastery Institute of Coaching in Los Angeles. And I'm thrilled to be a transformational life coach. I'm now able to help my students and clients harness their fullest potential, and create lives of vision and purpose. So my question for you is, what is your next big dream? Can you imagine how you're going to feel when your dream becomes a reality? So in the dream building program that I teach, there are these 10 principles that will actually skyrocket your success and your new beginnings when you apply them to your life. And today, you're going to learn three of these principles that you can apply right now to help you create a life you absolutely love by cracking this hidden code for manifesting your dreams. So if you're in for the possibility of creating something even more amazing for your life, please touch your heart and say, I'm in. And here's my promise to you. I'm going to give you everything that I can in the 35 minutes that we have together. And at the end of this presentation, many of you will want to take this information further and integrate it into your life. So for you, I have a special gift that you're going to love, and I'll give you that at the end of this presentation. Sound good? Okay. So this brings us to the first secret of dream building, and it's called designing a dream. So let's just take a breath now and go into this. I want to share with you a wonderful quote from a great life coach. His name is Tony Robbins, and he says, setting goals is the first step in turning the invisible into the visible. So what do you want? What would you love for your one precious life? 
Without a clearly defined blueprint, you can't build your dream. The same is true in building a house. You have to have a blueprint. And when you become clear on what it is you really want in life, you begin to see opportunities and resources that you would have otherwise completely missed. So let's take some moments now and design the blueprint for your dream. And let's make it crystal clear. Let's consider again these four areas of your life. Your health and well-being. Your relationships. Your creativity and vocation. And your time freedom. Your financial freedom. And for our purposes today, I'm going to invite you to choose just one of these areas that you would love to improve the most. So we're going to unlock your imagination now with this simple question. What would you love? So for a moment, just lean into that question. What would I love in this one area of my life? And I'm going to take you on this magical shamanic process called the time machine. And I'm going to have you imagine that you're getting into a time machine and that you're traveling three years ahead into the future. And uh, everything you com- you wanted completely worked out in this area of your life. So I hope you've got pen and paper there available with you. Because in a moment, I'm going to give you a couple minutes to write down what you would love in this area of your life. I'm also going to invite you to just suspend any urge to figure out how this result is going to happen right now. This is simply what you would love. As if someone gave you a magic wand and you could create exactly what you wanted. So I'm inviting you to dream big here. Okay? All right. So just sit back. Well, unless you're driving a car. Um, Please don't close your eyes if you're driving a car. But if you're in the comfort of your home or your office, close your eyes. Take a deep breath, get in this time machine, and imagine it's carried you three years ahead into your life. And all the challenges that you had, they're all solved. So consider this area of your life and what you would really love. And get out of the time machine and see your life as you would wish it to be. What great things are occurring for you? What experiences are you having? Who are you with? How does it feel? Really feel this. There you are, three years from now, living the life of your dreams. And now open your eyes. And for a minute or two, write as much as you can, really painting a beautiful picture of the life that you're imagining, the life that you just witnessed. And if you don't know it, that's okay. Just think about what would really interest you. Maybe to start writing that book that you've longed to do. Maybe taking an art class or going on that dream vacation. Take a moment and do some writing now. Try to capture this feeling. Capture what you saw. You're doing great. Okay. Put your pen down now, please. And look, you just took the first step in turning the invisible into the visible. Good work. Very good work. So this leads us now to dream building principle number two. Deciding for your dream. Once you make a firm decision, even in the absence of having all of the perfect conditions available, What happens when you make a firm decision 
is that a whole number of things begin to occur and rush to your aid for the fulfillment of that decision. That's exactly what happened to my client named Jennifer. Now, her situation was most likely a bit different from yours, and yet the steps she took are exactly what you can take to achieve your dream, no matter how big your dream is. So let me tell you a story of my client who went through the Dream Builder program with me, Um, Jennifer. She was highly successful in her career. She was working as a television producer in California. She had her own network show and a staff of 130 people. And she came to work with me because she was burned out. She had no excitement left and really no joy in her life. She had already reached all of her goals. You know, she had the big house and the big bank account, her favorite blue BMW. And she told me that she really missed who she used to be, this dynamo who created blockbuster shows and won so many awards. Now there was just no creativity. She felt empty, numb to life. Perhaps you've been there. You're facing a challenge that seems huge. And you may have been experiencing this problem for a while now. And you just don't know how to solve it. That's where Jennifer was. So she joined me in my Dream Builder coaching program because she decided if she was ever going to change her life, she needed support. And she talked to me about her longing to just leave things on the production table and go away into nature, into solitude, where she could listen or even begin to hear another voice other than the voice that said, work, produce, meet the deadlines. But then, you know, she said, I can't leave, even though my job is making me sick. And she was getting sick. She was developing heart problems and she had terrible migraine headaches. What she wanted was to just sail away on the family yacht, go somewhere quiet, meditate, and do yoga. So we began our work together, and I I asked her, what is one thing that makes you smile every time you think about it? And she said, oh, the rambling wind-swept house on the sea in the San Juan Islands with its wild roses. Then I asked her, what's one thing that's super exciting, but you have no idea how to do it? And she said, being at that house. And then she went on to say how stressful it was for her at work and that she had no energy left and that she felt hollow But then she would stop herself and she'd say, but you know, there's no way I can leave. I have production deadlines. I can't get out of them. So what I did was invited her to just push the pause button on trying to figure out how this dream could happen for her. Let's just get crystal clear, I said, on what this nature and solitude look like for you. So I helped Jennifer pay attention to what she would really love so she'd have a clear mental blueprint of it. And she described this beautiful place, this rambling house on a San Juan island that her family owned. The house had two stories with wood shingles and old-fashioned red roses climbing up the sides of it. She described the high seas and the salt spray on the windows and the large copper statue of Buddha meditating, looking out to the sea where the cargo ships sometimes passed. She described the wood-burning stove in the kitchen, the wooden table, and a steaming mug of tea. But then she'd sigh and she'd say, but this is just a fantasy. I can't leave my production team. And then I said, okay, 
But if a part of you didn't believe it was impossible, what could you do? And she said, well, I'd call the caretaker and ask him to get the house ready for me. Okay, I said, can you call him? This idea liberated powerful energy in Jennifer. I said, if a part of you didn't know it was impossible for you to have this time away, if you thought there was a chance, what could you do? She wasn't really sure, so she decided to just stay with that question. You see, what happens is that most of us learn to ask very weak questions of the universe. We say to ourselves, well, what does my bank account say I can do? Or what, what does my partner say I can do? Or what does my current job say I can do? So Jennifer was learning to ask a bigger question here. But her old mindset was telling her, this is impossible. And as long as she agrees with that old mindset, that becomes the limit of her possibility. But the truth is that we live in an abundant universe that's infinite in scope. Jennifer had a clear mental picture of the rambling, windswept house on the sea. And she was very clear in her longing to just be there. So she kept thinking, okay, if it weren't impossible, what could I do? And then she had this light bulb go off. Well, this is my company. I could just take a leave of absence, she thought. So she spoke with her business partner, and he was delighted to be handed the reins of power and the creative freedom that he had been longing for. And then she spoke with her family. Her daughter was going to Europe with friends on a graduation trip, and her husband was more than happy to go along as the European chaperone and to get to see Venice and Florence and Rome again. And so Jennifer went to the family's windswept house on the sea. She made that cup of tea, and she sat with the Buddha. After three months at the sea and with my weekly coaching support, Jennifer began to feel her source again, that living stream of well-being inside of her. She decided she had accomplished her mission at the network, and she sold her business to her partner. And she also reached the next level of her vision. She wanted to now help executives just like her, who needed to recover from overwhelm and burnout. So she and her husband worked together, and they converted the rambling ocean house into several retreat cottages for executives. So here's the thing. If Jennifer had stayed caught in the idea, there's no way I can have my dream, then that would have been exactly what happened for her. But with the help of my coaching, she accessed a different level of thinking. She created a clear blueprint for what she really wanted. She made a decision to act, even in the face of unknowing. And she also put herself on a different frequency a different wavelength where there was way more creativity, way more solutions. And she took action. I know it's just an extraordinary story, and whenever I tell her story, I I just want to applaud her. Her life has a whole new meaning now. So what about you and your dreams? It starts with making a decision. It starts by saying to yourself, today's the day I'm going after my dream. Today's the day I say no to the old doubts and reasons why it won't work. Today's the day I say yes 
to the possibilities and the opportunities that are right here in front of me. Today's the day you're going to suspend belief in conditions and instead believe in the power that's breathing you right now. Believe in the infinite intelligence that is guiding you. And to really do this brings us to dream building principle number three. How you can handle fear. I like to call this befriending your fear. And what I mean by befriending your fear is doing the thing you really want to do even when fear rises up and tries to stop you. You can make fear your friend. And great dream building requires the ability to suspend knowing how and taking action in the absence of having all of the answers. When we decide for a dream, there's a part of us that says yes, And you probably feel that part of you right now. And there's another part of us that rises up and says something quite different, doesn't it? It says, well, how are you going to do that? You've never done that before. Or, who are you kidding? You, You don't have what it takes. That's the voice of fear. And that voice is trying to keep you from failing, Okay, so what if you fail? Think about Oprah Winfrey. Did you know that she had a first television job in her career and she was fired? Management told her she certainly didn't have what it takes to be on broadcast network. Well, she kept going. Have you ever had a failure in life? Well, sure, you know, we all have. Think about it. When we were babies, you know, we started out crawling around on the floor, having a great time on the floor, but then we wanted to walk, and so we pulled ourselves up, took a step, we fell down. We pulled ourselves up, took some more steps, and eventually we all became walkers. We, we've had great success with that after terrible failure. You know, but something happens when we become adults. We stop giving ourselves permission to fail to fail and to fall down. And if we do fall down, if we fail in business, we say, well, I guess I'm not just, you know, meant to be a business owner here. I can't be an entrepreneur like I thought I could. Think about J.K. Rowling, the great British author. Her first book, Harry Potter, was rejected by 20 publishing houses. She didn't give up. She kept going. She got up after each rejection and resubmitted the manuscript again. So we get to do the same thing. We get to give ourselves permission to fail just enough so that we can succeed. Because fear and failure are prerequisites for manifesting dreams into reality. So when the voice of doubt questions you and asks, what if you fail? You can now have a response to that. You can say, bring it on. If I fail, I will rise up, I will keep going, and I will succeed. You know, the choices and the actions that you take right here today, these are ultimately who you become tomorrow. So those are just three of the ten steps in the Dream Builder program, and I hope they were very helpful to you. So as promised, I have a gift for you, and then we're going to close with a very powerful thought. But first, let's quickly recap what we've covered in Cracking the Hidden Code for Manifesting Your Dreams. So principle number one is designing your dream. Really asking yourself, what would I love? And allowing yourself to create a clear blueprint. And principle number two, the power of decision. 
just like Jennifer did with her leave of absence. Principle number three, befriending your fear. You now have an answer to fear. Bring it on. If I fail, I will rise up, keep going, and I will succeed. Now, here's that gift that I promised you. I carve out some time each week for what I call clarity strategy sessions. These are 60-minute phone conversations where we get clear on exactly where you are and what you would love to create for your life. And the next most important step that you can take that will move you in the direction of your dream. So this one-on-one 60-minute session with me is valued at $250. If you're ready to invest in achieving your dream, your next step is a strategy session with me at no charge. This is my special offer to you. So when we complete our session here today, Simply send me an email with the subject line, Cracking the Code, and you can email me at this email address, beth at bethberkins.com. Beth is B-E-T-H, Berkins is B-E-U-R-K-E-N-S, and I'll email you back with a link to my online calendar, and we'll find the perfect time in our schedules to get together and talk these things through and go more deeply than we were going here today in this talk. So make sure that you do this and do it very soon because these sessions do fill up very quickly. So when we think about Jennifer, she once sat right where you're sitting. You're dreaming of something. She was dreaming of a windswept house by the sea and having silent time, rest time. What is it that you're dreaming of? Hmm? Jennifer never in a hundred years could imagine that in a few short months she would be living her dream. She became a dream builder, and so can you. Remember and know that what is inside you is far greater than any challenge that you're facing. You have incredible power within you. And this is your moment. Today is your day to take bold action. As the philosopher Goethe once said, whatever you can do or dream you can do, begin it. Boldness has genius, power, and magic in it. Begin it now. It's time to make the commitment. Let me help you achieve your dream and be a dream builder. Thank you so much for being here with me today. I've really enjoyed this time with you. I wish you a fabulous day, and I look forward to hearing from you very, very soon.